In this video, I want to talk about the assumption which we call strict exogeneity. And I'm going to define exactly what I mean by that by means of a sort of situation. So I've got a model where yt is equal to alpha plus beta xt plus some error ut. And the strict exogeneity assumption is that we assume that the expectation of this error term ut, given the values of xt in all other periods, has to be equal to zero. So, and this has to hold not just for the period where s equals t, it actually has to hold for all values of s, where this sort of sign here, if you haven't seen it before, just means for all. And this is the assumption of strict exogeneity, and it's different to the assumption which we had in cross-sectional data, which we call weak exogeneity, which was the expectation of ui given xi had to be equal to zero. And notice that these two terms here have the same subscript. So this, it means that just the expectation of the error has to, hold, has to be equal to zero given the independent variables for that particular individual. Okay, I want to talk about two particular situations which can cause the assumption of strict exogeneity to fail. The first is, let's say we have GDP at time t as being dependent on some sort of monetary policy decision at time t. So we have y is equal to alpha plus delta times monetary policy at time t plus some error ut. It is frequently the case that independent variables can have some sort of a lagged effect on the dependent variables. So we would actually have the case that GDP at time t plus 2, let's say, might depend on monetary policy at time t and that would actually be contained within this particular sort of error term here. So this error term ut plus 2 would actually contain some sort of effect, let's call it beta times monetary policy at time t. And because this error term here actually contains the monetary policy at time t, we're going to have some sort of correlation between monetary policy at time t and the error at time t plus 2 and it might be sort of positive correlated, it might be negatively correlated, but there will be some sort of correlation. And because of that, in this particular circumstance, delta hat least squares will be what we call biased. But luckily there's an easy way to deal with this and it's actually to include sort of lagged effects of the independent variables. So we could, ha could have that GDP at time t is equal to alpha plus delta one times monetary policy at time t plus let's say monetary policy at time t minus 2 in this particular circumstance. And by including this term explicitly in the regression that is actually going to remove the correlation between ut plus 2 and mt. So just by making our model dynamic rather than static we have actually removed this problem of strict exogeneity being violated. Another way in which we can have uh, a violation of strict exogeneity is, let's say we have a model which is sales at time t is dependent on the amount of advertising at time t. So we have a model which looks something like this. But it's frequently the case that the amount of advertising at, let's say, period t plus 1 is some function of the amount of sales which the company achieved at time t. And um, we know that the the expression for the company sales at time t, it is itself some function of the error ut. So we've got the situation here because of this feed forward effect of advertising through to sales and from sales through to future levels of advertising, we know that the error at time, U, uh, time t rather is going to be correlated with advertising at periods t plus 1. And in this particular circumstance, we would hypothesize that it is positively correlated with advertising at period t plus 1. This feed-forward situation is a more serious situation than that of a sort of lagged effect, which we indicated in these sort of GDP models. In the sort of GDP models, we were easily able to deal with it by including lagged values of that variable. But if we're creating a time series model, we won't necessarily have the sort of future periods values of advertising. So it's less obvious how we can actually deal with this particular effect. Luckily, 
it turns out that the sort of large sample uh, properties of least squares in the sort of time series context only depend on us having a weak exogeneity situation. And I'm going to talk about that in future videos. And luckily, this means for large enough samples, we can sort of forget about the strict exogeneity assumption because least squares happens to be consistent. 